Hi, and in this video guide, I'm going to go over the details of how to simulate your World of Warcraft character in Legion in order to get stat weights for judging gear upgrades, for how to compare different relics for your artifact, and for how to compare different trinkets as well. I have done a video on using Simulation Craft already this expansion, but that was just from the point of view of getting stat weights. This one will be a little bit more comprehensive, although don't see it as a comprehensive guide to Simulation Craft. But as such, I've got timestamps in the description below, so you can jump to each area if you're only interested in how to do one of the tasks covered here, although I would recommend you watch the whole thing. So the first thing to point out, especially for people new to my channel, is there aren't any BIS lists in Legion. Stop asking for them. If anyone actually gives them to you, they're basically lying. There is no such thing as stat weights for a particular class or spec either. Everything is personal to you and your character now, so you can only judge upgrades by yourself. That's the bad news. The good news is that although it can seem fiddly to do this at first, it really isn't that difficult to do the basics, and once you've done it a few times, it becomes much more straightforward. So watch through this guide a few times if you need to, and you'll be able to look ahead at upgrades for your own character in no time. So the first thing we need to cover is actually getting Simulation Craft, often known as SimCraft for short. This is a program which needs to be downloaded, but doesn't take up much space on your hard drive. Type Download Simulation Craft into Google, and you will get a screen like this. Now, rather than downloading where it says to, you actually want to click on the link that says New Windows Builds Every Few Days Here. This will take you to a screen looking like this. Click on the one nearest to the top with the .exe tag after it. This will be the most up-to-date. Getting the most up-to-date version and checking that it remains up-to-date is important. This is because Simulation Craft is created and maintained by players who are trying to model the game itself based on testing. Sometimes the model is not quite correct or Blizzard changed something, and that model needs refining. So once you've downloaded Simulation Craft and opened it up, you'll get a screen like this. To import the data for your character, you will need to hit the Simulate tab. This is where you'll paste your character's data. Now to get that data, in the previous video I showed you how to get this from the Armoury. However, it's not working great at the moment, so currently the advice is to use a small add-on called Simulation Craft. You can download this from Curse, and all the details are in a video I made specifically for this add-on, which I've linked here, as well as in the description below. When you have your data, paste it into the Simulate tab, deleting the text already there. Before we actually simulate, let's go through some essential options. First of all, we need to select the style of fight, so press the Options tab. When you see the results of simulations, or sims as they're known, it is almost always with a patchwork fight. This is a pure single target fight with no movement or adds or any change in the damage taken by your target. As such, it's not a great match for any boss fight, but it can be close enough for some, such as Ursoc in Emerald Nightmare or Guam in Trial of Valor. Ectic Ad Cleave is potentially more suitable for dungeons, if Mythic Plus Dungeons is your thing, but you may or may not want to change the target type from Raid Boss to 5-Man Heroic. It's also suitable for a very small number of raid encounters that have involved lots of movement and adds. You can see what each fight style does by hovering your cursor over the current selection and its patchwork by default. So once you've decided what fight conditions you want, it's time to decide what you want to do. If you're looking for stat weights to use with something like Pawn, an add-on for comparing equipment that I explain if you look into my playlist on add-ons, then you will need to tick a few more boxes. Click on the tab called Scaling in Options and tick Enable Scaling, as well as the stats you are interested in. This is likely to be your primary stat along with Crit, Haste, Versatility and Mastery. Weapon DPS is less important to Legion because you don't choose weapons. At this point, you can click Simulate and use those results to give you a reasonable idea about how much each stat is worth to you. Now, it's worth pointing out if you're not interested in the stat weights, you just want to know what is your simulated overall DPS, you don't have to click Enable Scaling. It is worth bearing in mind that enabling scaling will make the simulation take longer. So decide whether you actually want the stat weights or not. So for determining stat weights in Simulation Craft, that's how we do it. Next, we're going to look at trinkets. So you can't use stat weights to compare trinkets unless it's between two stat stick trinkets. That is, trinkets with only stats and no special effects. 
For this, we can also use Simulation Craft. I'm only going to go over how to compare trinkets and not produce the long list that you may see dotted around on various sites. There are two ways to compare trinkets. If you own the trinkets you want to compare, then simply equip one set, simulate yourself as I've already described in the video. You can then change the set, use the Simulation Craft add-on to produce a new profile, paste that into the Simulate tab, either the same one overwriting it, or just create yourself a new one, simulate this second set, and then compare the results. However, it may be that you're looking ahead to trinkets that can drop off bosses you're either farming or expecting to kill soon. You want to know whether to coin or bid on an item that drops. In this case, we need to rewrite some code in Simulation Craft, but it's quite easy to do. If you look at the profile data, you'll see that each equipped item has an ID and a bonus ID. We just need to replace the ones for the slot you wish to change to the values for the trinket you don't yet have. To get these values, look up on the trinket on Wowhead. So on the Wowhead database, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the trinket in question. Now, let's say I want to look up Nature's Call, which is a trinket that drops off Scenarius in the Emerald Nightmare. So I click it there, it's the item I want, Nature's Call, and there it is. Now, I don't just want to look it up for any old item level. So let's say I want to look up a mythic version, because of course it may well be you want to try out different item levels. It might be that maybe you've got reasonably high item levels of trinkets you've got, but maybe a much higher item level trinket might be an upgrade. So you want to find out what item level will be an upgrade. So we've got the standard ones here, but if you want to aim much higher on, item level 850 plus if we just click on that and then scroll down to these and I can click on the item I want so 880 maybe so I'll click on 880 if I get that version so that's what's here and it shows you the the stats in it so then what I click on is links and what I'm interested in is this thing that says markup tag and you can see here it's got the item code as well as the bonus code. So I'm just going to write down those. So the item code I can see is 139334 and the bonus ID is 1502 And that's the information I need from Wowhead and I can use that information to import into Simulation Craft. So back to Simulation Craft in the profile and what you'll want to do is to amend the relative details. Now where you see the list of equipment, Trinket 1 and Trinket 2, Trinket 1 is, as you look at your character sheet, the one at the top, and Trinket 2 is the one at the bottom. So you can sort of work out which Trinket is you need to replace it for. Overwrite the ID with the new ID. Overwrite the bonus ID with the new bonus ID. Don't worry that the numbers look a little different. It doesn't look like the bonus ID is in quite the same format. It's fine. Put it in and then simulate it again. Now, if you're only comparing DPS values for the different trinket profiles, you don't need to have enable scaling checks. That just makes it take longer. So you can untick that unless you want the stat weights. Try it for the new trinket. So the question is, why would you do this? Because you could just look up a list that someone's already produced telling you how much DPS each of those trinkets is going to provide and go with that one. There's a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, it's for particular item levels. Well, if the item level of the trinket you have or you're going to get is not quite the same, then you're not quite sure you're sort of already hedging your bets a little bit anyway. The other reason is that those simulations that someone else has produced have been produced using a different set of gear. It might be a standard set of gear. It might be the gear of their own paladin, their own retribution paladin, or whichever character it is that they're doing it for. Because remember, this same thing applies to any DPS spec. If you use Simulation Craft to do it yourself, not only are you doing it for the specific item level you're interested in, because you can repeat this whole process for every single item level that's potentially going to be achieved by you, no matter how much it war forges or titan forges up. You might think to yourself, oh, this could take quite some time. Well, as I say, remember, if, as long as you know, if you click Enable Scaling, yes, it'll take a long time. If you don't have Enable Scaling click, it actually doesn't take that long. It's just the fiddliness of writing in new codes each time. But think about it this way, once you've done it, you're set. You know what items are coming up. You could do this for all of the Emerald Nightmare things that will drop, all of the Trial of Valor things that will drop, even all of the Nighthold things that will drop if Nighthold is out when you're watching this video. And indeed, whatever raid is, is, it is out there. And once you've done it, yes, it might take you an afternoon or something, 
But once it's done, it's done, you've got it. Unless, of course, Blizzard changed something on the simulation craft changes. And you can do this for any item level, and you will know for your character which one's the best one to go. So if you use someone else's data, there's always going to be some inaccuracies in it, and it may not be true for you. Now, I'm not saying that simulation craft is 100% accurate. Remember, it's a model. Any model can have some doubt in it, but it is the most accurate that you can possibly do. So that's why you'd use this for trinkets. Now, for relics, it works much the same, only it is a little more fiddly. But just as with trinkets, if we want to swap out for a relic, we can't obviously swap a relic and then just change it back like we can a trinket because we destroy relics by putting them in. So it really doesn't matter whether we've got it in our bags or whether it's one we're looking ahead that might drop off a boss. We're going to need the ID and the bonus ID from Wowhead. So let's get back there. So to get the bonus and, and item ID that we need for the relics, again, we go back to Wowhead. So here we are back with the trinket I was looking up earlier. So this time I want to look up a relic. So the relic I'm interested in is a holy relic that drops off Odin. So I'm going to type the name of it in favour of the prime designate. I've just realised it'll be American spelling. There we go, it's probably happy with that. There we are, that's it. I don't know, Americans with your funny spellings. But, so here we go. Again, item level. Item level is likely to be key here. So what I'm really interested in is how does it shape up in terms of like the, the trait on it or something like that. So we'll look at the item level I'm after. So let's say I'm looking at a, an, a mythic item level here. So let's have a look at 895. And there it is for 895. Now, just as with the trinket, we click on links to get the information we need. And again, we get uh, what we need here, which is the item code, which I'm going to write down. In this particular case, it's 142519. I also want the bonus code, which in this case is 1512, colon 3469. And that's the information I need, which I'll now need to import into Simulation Craft. Okay, so once we've copied down that data, again, we go back to the simulate profile. Make sure it's all correct. Make sure it's the one we wanted. Now, when you look at the relevant part of the code we need to change, which is right at the bottom where it says main hand, first of all, there's an ID code. We ignore that. That's not what we're interested in. What we're interested in is the bonus ID and the gem ID. Now, what you'll notice is on Wowhead, the thing is labeled as item and bonus ID. The item is the gem ID in Simulation Craft, and the bonus ID is not the bonus ID that's given on Simulation Craft. That's a different thing. It's the relic ID. It's very important to get this right. So you overwrite the relevant gem ID with the item ID that we got from Wowhead, and we overwrite the relevant relic ID with the bonus ID we got off Wowhead. Now, the other thing to point out, of course, is that you have three relics on your weapon, or if you've completed your uh, full class missions, you will have, and you've got three sets of codes for the relic ID and the gem ID. They are separated by slashes. We have to change the right one. We're not changing the lot, we're just changing one of them. Now, you have to know in which order your relics work. As a retribution paladin, mine go holy, fire, holy. So if I were to replace, say, the fire relic, it would be the middle ones in each case that I would alter. However, because this one I've looked up is a holy one, I have to amend one of the holy ones. So which is it I'm going to go for? Is it the first one or the last one? In this case, it's going to be the second of the holy relics. That's the one right on the end, which is, for me, the third set of bonuses. So what I'm going to do is to overwrite for the relic ID, the third set, the third string there, with the bonus ID I got from Wowhead. And then I'm going to change the third gem ID with the item ID I got from Wowhead. And then that will have changed the relic. And that covers both the item level of the relic itself as well as the trait that it's going to give me. 
so that I can compare DPS. And then all I have to do is to simulate again, just like with trinkets, there's no need for me to enable scaling because I'm not interested in stat weights, just overall simulated DPS so that I can compare what I have now with what I'm proposing I get. And I could do it for lots of different item levels as well and see what comes out. So hopefully that explains how you can use simulation craft to not only determine your stat weights, but also to compare trinkets at different item levels and also to compare relics again at different item levels. Now, it's worth practicing with it a little bit. The first time you try it short, it might be a bit fiddly. You might make a mistake. Keep practicing it. You get to the point where actually it's quite straightforward to do. And it is the sort of thing that is worth doing. Remember, you cannot ask for bis lists. As I said before, they just don't exist. Titan forging stops it being a thing because there's too much variation with that. Same with um, stat weights, they can't, they can't actually work for any particular class or spec because they move around so much. So this is a way that you can be able to do it for yourself. One other question I often get asked is how often should you do it? Should you do it every time you change, particularly for the stat weights, should you do it every time you change a piece of gear or something like that? The answer is not really. Uh, unless it's a legendary you're going to use, maybe it's worth it. I would say only re-simulate yourself your stat weights either roughly once a week or if you get very major upgrades all at once perhaps it's worth doing then so hopefully you found that useful if you did don't forget to like comment subscribe and share for further content and until next time i'll see you later